What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. Welcome to Marsman Gaming. As gamers, we've experienced so many different types of games throughout our entire lifespan. And as we play through all these different types of games, we usually have a select few that we consider to be legendary. These games transcend all the rest and are placed on a pedestal considered to be an all time great. In this video, I focus on one of these titles and discuss whether or not it should be considered amongst this list. Today's video focuses on Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Why should this game considered to be legendary? How does Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild transcend all the rest? I answer all this and more, so stick around to the end. This is Marsman Gaming. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was released back in 2017, setting itself to be the launch title for the Nintendo Switch. Even before it was released, it was extremely hyped. The trailer was absolutely bliss, and honestly, as a full-grown adult, the child of me came out and I was like, I gotta buy this game instantly once it comes out. And for the longest time, I was sitting here thinking that only Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time could be considered the best Legend of Zelda game out there, but damn, when that trailer was released, I was getting nervous that that award would change hands. So on release day, you know your boy was waiting in line at GameStop, and somehow, some way, I was able to get a Switch and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild with little to no injury. So what makes a legendary game? As gamers, we consider legendary games as those that not only set the standard of being a great game, but those that excel beyond that limit and become even better than what we ever expected. When I analyze games, I try to prioritize things like the story and characters, the gameplay and replayability, the environment and atmosphere, and obviously the impact that the game has. Because legendary games should be able to hit all these facets and excel at them. By the end of the video, you will know that Breath of the Wild is a legendary game. So let's start off with the story and the characters. Most Legend of Zelda games generally start out the same. The main protagonist is usually a nameless boy that is basically prophesized to be bigger than what his current character is. Most of the time, this character will be set to fight off against a major evil that is trying to take over the kingdom, and it was up to you to stop them before their plan comes to fruition. This is not exactly the story for every Legend of Zelda game, but for the most part, I feel like I'm on point. Pretty much in the beginning, you learn that you are part of a bigger lore and a legend that takes place throughout the entire story, and you learn about this along the way. Breath of the Wild doesn't really follow the story in this way, shape, or form. In this game, you start with, what's this? Voice? Voice acting? You hear Zelda's voice with words? Oh my god! You start off as Link, waking up from a slumber, asking, wake up, Link. And right from the start, you're thrown right into the game with little to no major cutscene that draws away time from just playing the game. You're left with a mystery and asked to do some tutorial missions to get started with knowing how to play the game. Once you complete the first tutorial, you start to find out where the hell you are and what is the basic thing that happened. And right from here, the story just opens up. Remember how I told you in the beginning of the video that every story starts out with the with this evil force that is trying to take over the kingdom? Well, Breath of the Wild does the exact opposite. Not only did they take over the kingdom, but they basically annihilated everyone, and it's up to you to kind of stop this reign of terror from continuing. The only basic premise that stays consistent is that you have to save Zelda. So essentially, Breath of the Wild does the opposite in how they do these things, where Zelda's already captured at the start of the game, and the, the whole kingdom's already annihilated, and it's up to you to reverse the course of a lot of these things and save Zelda in the end. Now, in order for you to do this, you need to get access to the four mechanical beasts that were once controlled by the champions of Hyrule. Now, one of the cool things about this story was that each of these different champions have an own character and backstory behind them. Mifa, the Zora champion, was considered to be the healer of the group. You have Dork, who is the Goron champion, who had the ultimate defense and the basically the comic relief of the group. Ravali, who was the Rito champion, who was considered to be Link's rival throughout the entire story. Urbosa, who was the Gerudo champion, who was considered to be the mother figure to Zelda and controlled lightning. What I really liked about this game was that throughout as you play, you will have different memories to show you where does Link mix amongst these different characters and also sheds light on the story leading up to the fatal event that happens before the game even starts. Basically the entire time, Link has no memory of what's going on. So these memories essentially are gonna give you all the ideas and key concepts that the story is missing right from the very beginning of the game. It builds the context and I like about it is it shows you the interactions, the emotion behind each one, and I really enjoy 
how these memories impact the story. Each mechanical beast that you go and rescue serves as a dungeon, and each one is different in its own way. For example, some of them are going to be using wind, some of them will be using sunlight, and it's kind of interesting to try to mix and move this mechanical beast around to kind of get a handle of how do you solve this giant puzzle. Legends of the Breath of Wild plays like a giant puzzle and i think that is what makes the game so interesting especially with how they format their story legend of zelda games are always full of different types of lore and expansive world that was around you the whole point of this game was that instead of you feeling like you have it all and you're growing and growing and growing as, as the game progresses it kind of sheds a different type of idea for the gamer breath of the wild has it where link at its peak was the strongest dude in this entire group. Then he's broken to his core in the before the game even starts, and it's up to you to rebuild Link's ability and his memories to make him back to his highest level. It kind of makes you think about how, essentially, you start out with being this ultimate warrior, right? And you're just destroyed. And it's up to you, basically, to now revamp yourself to get back to that level you were before when you fought against Ganon. It's a really cool premise, and I'm really glad that they did it. What I always found really interesting as well in Legend of Zelda games was they always found ways to connect old concepts from previous titles and bring it to the new one. And this game did it very well. For example, you'll see characters and locations and even items that were from previous games brought back and kind of melded in the correct way. For example, you'll see people like the Deku Tree, places like the Kriko Village, weapons like the Master Sword, all brought back and found in different ways and kind of having these tunes and sounds that make you feel like, damn, I remember this from the old games and they try to copy it so that all those older fans like me are gonna say, that's from Ocarina of Time or that's from Majora's Mask and it makes you feel the nostalgia, and it just feels like bliss. What is the best part is that this story feels like a successor to games like Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, which most Legend of Zelda fans were itching to see a successor to. Legendary games usually have a story that is so compelling that it not only entices returning fans to come back, but even entices new people to join the community and enjoy the story altogether. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild not only matches the standard of a good story, but expands and even pe reaches past it by basically making a story that's so compelling and interesting that it makes people coming back for more. Next up, let's talk about the gameplay. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild does something completely different from what the previous titles in the series have done before. It expands the map more than ever seen, and it makes it literally a survival game. They expand the map as much as possible to the point where it feels like it's completely endless. Now, the last Legend of Zelda titles that have tried to accomplish this feat would probably be Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword and Majora's Mask. Both those games attempted to do an open world, but they were limited to the either the time period in which the game was made or to the amount that they would have to go into making this a completely open world or making it more of a limited open world game like Skyward Sword. Both were very good games, but they don't meet the standard that Breath of the Wild does that makes it completely open. You notice right from the beginning that they set you out into this open world with little to no cutscenes and say, hey, go play the game. This game does it perfectly. It finds a way to, to make a game that is full of stuff to do and an expansive world that is not only beautiful, but it just has so much fun and different types of activities that you can accomplish. This game has it where you can literally go right to the final level, right from the start if you want to, and try to accomplish that most difficult job of beating Ganon with little to no lives. Or you can go from the other directive, like yours truly, and go through every quest to make Link the most badass character possible when fighting against Ganon at the end. That's the point. The Nintendo wants you to be able to control your own destiny, and that's what makes this game so fascinating. You can do anything you want, anywhere you want to, and it's all up to you. Now, the best part about this game is the fact that it's all about surviving. They treat you like you are in the wilderness, with no help whatsoever, and you need to go find your weapons, your clothing, you need to craft upgrades, different foods, everything is in your hands, and the added strategy of weapons breaking mid-combat makes it that you need to be strategic in how you go about fighting different characters, and even in some cases, avoiding conflict so that you don't get killed in the end. However, they did add a bonus where if you do beat a group of enemies, there's a high chance you get an item that is a rarer or more powerful than the one you have. And as I said before, 
The replayability of this game is what makes it one of the most legendary games out there. Most of the time, open world games have a difficult time making that mix between a massive open world and things to do. I can give you a long list of open world games that struggled with this, going from Assassin's Creed Odyssey, going to Far Cry, and to and many others. The point is, is that Legends of the Breath of the Wild finds the perfect match between making a large open world game with a lot of things to do and any way to go about doing it. Breath of the Wild sets a standard on what an open world game is supposed to be. A lot of things to do in open world and go explore it. Let's talk about the atmosphere and the environment. Legends of the games usually have been pretty good at including different types of environments in all their games. The same thing can be said about Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. From snowy peaks, to deserts, to marshes, to woodlands, and even the sky, Breath of the Wild has included all these different environments and they did it beautifully. But I find the most important thing about Breath of the Wild's gameplay and how these environments work is that they have a constant night and day cycle with weather and it actually has you plan out your excursions. You can't just run into a fight because what would happen if it starts raining and all of a sudden you can't even climb up a mountain? You have to be smart with going about your travels because you can fall in a really bad situation where you don't have food, you don't have the right clothing on, and you can get killed and all of a sudden you're in a really tough situation. Things like where they added a weather system where it makes it hot or cold and you have to dress in the right way or else you won't survive. Now, I'm not saying that Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was the first ones to ever do this. Because even in its own series, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, they all did these types of things before, where you had to wear a certain item to progress through that story. However, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has this constantly. You have to always be cognizant of which area you are, because it might be certainly too cold for you to progress forward, and it might be slightly colder or even warmer, and you have to be smart in how you address this, because each clothing has certain defenses that are there, so that you might be very vulnerable or you might not be. It depends on the area and what you're wearing. Well, the other key things I like about Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was the music. The biggest thing that Legend of Zelda always has in all of its games is the songs and soundtracks really bring out the emotion and also the levels that you're playing. Breath of the Wild may not be the best soundtrack in the entire series, but it does a fantastic job at encapsulating the environments that you're in. I can remember right from the very beginning when I first saw the trailer of Breath of the Wild, I was blown away by the music and I was just drawn in when I heard the piano for the first time. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild does this constantly. The fact is you can go right from the first mission, right from the from the opening cutscene, you walk outside and you get hit with this great piano music to try to show you this vast world that you're entering. And this is happening constantly, whether you're riding the horse that you have, throughout the different levels, or you're entering in a very tough situation, you're fighting a boss fight, whatever it is, you're always going to get a soundtrack song that does bring out the situation and the environment that you're in. People always look past music in games. For some reason, people don't understand that music only amplifies what the game situation is asking you to do or what's going on. Legend of Zelda games usually have very good soundtracks. Breath of the Wild has a fantastic one, and I think this does add to his already stunning set of standards that they've set for other games in its own genre. The environment makes this game feel like it's not bland. It has a lot of things to do, and with the added music touch to it, it just makes it fun. And I think that that's what gives this environment and atmosphere a leg up compared to a lot of others. Lastly, let's talk about the impact. According to critics, this game is being listed in the top 10 and tied for the best games of all time, Falling amongst the lines of Halo Combat Evolved, Mario Galaxy, Grand Theft Auto V, and Perfect Dark, hitting at a 97 on Metacritic. Even topping games like Half-Life 2, Bioshock, Resident Evil 4. Clearly the popularity was so high that the Nintendo Switch became a top 5 selling console of all time, and it's still relatively young compared to all the rest of them. With the increased selling of the Nintendo Switch, I can guarantee you that will go up the list as time progresses. Similar to games like Halo Combat Evolved, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was a launch title for the Nintendo Switch. A legendary game can really push the selling of a console so that it becomes extremely popular. Like for example, if Halo Combat Evolved wasn't good at all, then the Xbox probably wouldn't even exist. Now, I don't think the Nintendo Switch would fall into the same issues that the Xbox originally had in its, in its launch, but I think that this console would not have sold as well if Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was in the game launching with it. Legendary games not only have profound effects on the console that it's selling with, 
but also have an impact on other games in its own genre. For example, Elden Ring, being a legendary game by most people's standards, takes a lot of shared concepts from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. From Software has publicly stated that a lot of the influence for Elden Ring does come from this game. Whether it's the map design, whether it's the combat, whether it's the boss fights, all these different things kind of show how they are mirrored in a lot of different ways. Now you might say, well, Mars man, Elden Ring is a branch off of what Dark Souls games are like. True, but I'm also gonna say that Elden Ring does take a lot of shared concepts from Breath of the Wild. I'm not saying it's an identical copy, but you can see that when From Software says, hey, we play Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and this game does have a lot of influence from that game. Breath of the Wild has a perfect formula for open world games, and it's clearly here that you can see that other games from other companies do agree with it. Imitation is a sign of respect, and Breath of the Wild definitely deserves it. The question I asked at the beginning of the video was, why is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild a legendary game? Legendary games not only meet the standard that is met for a good game, but they transcend all those standards and put it on a pistol amongst the best. Breath of the Wild not only captured the original formula that most Legend of Zelda games had before it, but transcended and made it even more successful by making a perfect version of an open world game with so much to do and a lot of fun doing it. This game was literally built like a giant puzzle, which made people constantly try to fight and strategize and how they would go about this game and that's what makes the game so interesting in its environment and gameplay. Creating rich characters with so many different types of backgrounds really emphasizes the story lore that Breath of the Wild has, and it makes the story so interesting and compelling that it brings not only old fans, but new fans to this community. The gameplay loop of this game is one of the smoothest I've seen in a long time. Basically, the ability for you to fight enemies and have weapons break on you and strategize around that entire loop is one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time in an open world game. The vast environments with all the different types of music being played, ever changing weather, changing night and day cycles, and just a beautiful sight to see makes the entire art style of this game look stunning. This game sets the bar so high for open worlds that's really difficult to see who can ever match this game. In 2017, this game won Game of the Year, and in my opinion, it was by a landslide. Even though this year had many top-level titles that were competing against it. It really shows how critics, developers, and gamers alike gave this game the respect it deserves. When you think of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, you only think of one thing. That game is legendary. Thank you everyone for watching. Please, if you haven't done so yet, drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Please join us on social media on Discord and Twitter, and that is located in the description below. You can also support the channel by joining our Patreon, and that is also located in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace.